Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings from Gun Nuts Media, and today we're on the range here at National Armory to do a little bit of fun ballistics testing. What I have here is a two pound brick of modeling clay. Now this is actually two one pound bricks that have been packaged together. And what we're gonna do is I've got a bunch of these and we're gonna shoot them with three popular nine millimeter self-defense loads. What do we hope to gain out of doing this? Hopefully some good camera footage and some interesting ballistics results. I'm hoping we have enough clay that we'll actually be able to capture the bullets from the testing that have gone and been fired through the clay. A couple of things to note, this isn't a legitimate ballistics test, okay? You shouldn't make self-defense decisions based on what happens to a bullet when it gets shot through modeling clay because modeling clay is not people and people are not modeling clay. One of the big problems with use, using modeling clay as a ballistic medium is it's inelastic, all right? When I shoot modeling clay with a bullet, it tends to stay in the shape that it was in during that initial impact of the bullet. It's not like a person, people, aside from being ugly bags of mostly water, our tissues are very elastic. They stretch and then they come back, which is why, as a side note, we talk, when we talk about temporary wound cavity with pistols, it's not a wounding mechanism. It just isn't. It has to, the tissues stretch and they come back. The only way pistol bullets hurt stuff is they actually have to hit stuff. So today, however, we're going to shoot three popular self-defense loads through some modeling clay. We're going to hopefully recover the bullets. We're going to see how many bricks of modeling clay these different rounds go through and have some fun from that. So let me get my little test area set up and then we're going to do some shooting. Okay, here's our test rig. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two piece blocks so that's 14 blocks each block's about an inch and a half thick we've got well over a foot of ballistic clay here and we've got an old crappy t-shirt that we're going to shoot these rounds through first again these are not meaningful ballistic tests okay i have to emphasize that because i don't want you guys to make self-defense ammunition determinations based off whether or not these rounds will expand after they've been shot through a t-shirt into ballistic clay. That being said, what are we hoping to get out of this? Some information. Our first round that we're going to test is going to be my carry round. This is going to be the Winchester Ranger or the PDX-1 Defender 147 grain 9mm round. This will be fired out of a 5 inch Kimber Team Match 2 as will all of our rounds today. Well, as you can see, that made quite the mess of things, and I don't think I'll be able to recover that round to see how it expanded. But I do want to point out, this is the danger of using ballistics clay, or excuse me, modeling clay as a ballistics medium. Do you see this enormous cavity that this thing hollowed out? People see stuff like that and they think, oh my gosh, that's what that round is going to do. Well, actually it's not because if you fired this round through conventional ballistics medium or into a human being, uh, all of this that's expanded and completely blown out is going to collapse back down into the permanent wound cavity. Okay, up next we're going to try the Winchester PDX-1 Defender 124 grain plus P. I've turned the block around so we can shoot at the undamaged side of it. I'm also gonna shoot at a bare block so that my, hopefully I'll be able to get a dead center hit and the round won't deviate out of the block because again, I'd like to be able to recover one of these. As you can see, the first block has been completely annihilated by that round. Let me get my gloves on here. For the record, the reason I'm using gloves when I touch the clay after I've shot it is the clay is now basically full of lead 
and I want to avoid as much lead exposure as possible. My BLL's blood lead levels are already high enough as is. All right, so here's the first block of clay. It's been completely blasted in half by the passage of the round. The, you can actually see marks on the clay from the rifling in the round. And it has just devastated this block. But I can actually see the projectile inside the block. Check this out. I'm gonna pull the camera here real quick. You can just see the projectile that came to rest at the back end of that second block. So I'm gonna separate these blocks and try to recover that projectile. Okay, split these right here. Oh. So there's the exit from the second block. And there is the round in the first block right here. So there you go. There is your 124 grain projectile fully expanded from its passage through the modeling clay that came to rest in the, uh, it was basically right in the very front of that third block of clay. All right, I'm gonna remold these blocks as best as I can, and we're going to try the, and we're gonna try this shot again with the T-shirt in front of the blocks. Damn it! Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a good center hit again. Whenever I put the T-shirt on there, it kind of throws my aiming reference off. So I think what I need to do in the future is get more clay blocks to make my little test bed wider. Or, I mean, I could probably expand it right now. But regardless, that was the 124 grain plus P nine mil again through a T-shirt. Again, you can see the result is just catastrophic for the clay. The violence of the expansion that this thing goes through when it hits this is just unbelievable. It's ripping this in half. It's throwing modeling clay all over my tripod. So I'm gonna shoot this one more time with the 147 and on the bare clay, hopefully I'll be able to recover that bullet. That's what I'm trying to do here is recover that last bullet. We're gonna skip shooting the Federal 124 grain HST for now and hopefully just get one shot where we can recover the Winchester Ranger 147 grain bullet from bare clay. Well, without the t-shirt covering up the target, I was definitely able to get a good hit on the clay. And the damage the Ranger did was not as catastrophic as the 124 grain plus P projectile. Or excuse me, the 147 grain Ranger wasn't nearly as catastrophic as the 124 grain plus P projectile. It did rip this one completely in half, but this one had already also been blasted by the 124. It went through this block entirely. You can see on the inside of this block, you've got traces of the t-shirt from where I shot it through the block. And then this block, it penetrated completely. So, and then finally came to rest inside the fourth block. Oh, I get it out. There we go. So, here's the 
147 grain projectile, also fully expanded. And of course, that's because everything expands when you shoot it into ballistic, into modeling clay. It's guaranteed to get 100% expansion. Hopefully next time we'll be able to get the t-shirt to, I'll get a, I'm gonna order some more clay blocks and we'll have a wider target so that we'll be able to capture the bullets after they've been fired through the folded up t-shirt. I'm gonna jam these blocks back together real quick and I'm gonna tr try one round, one more t-shirt round just to see if we can make it work. Okay, one last try to capture a round that's been fired through a t-shirt. I've doubled the width of the clay. We're gonna try the Winchester 147 grain PDX-1 Defender, AKA Ranger, one last time. Okay, with the double block, it looks like I was actually able to capture the round this time. So, went through the t-shirt, obviously. Here's what it did to the first block. You can see little particles in here where it dragged the t-shirt. There's the exit out of the first block. That's pretty, pretty catastrophic here. And then it split these two blocks in half, contacted that one a little bit, did most of its energy, expended most of its energy blasting this block into two little bits. That just totally friggin' ruined. And then came to rest, still dragging bits of t-shirts. There's still little bits of t-shirt particles in there, but if you look, you can see the projectile down in here Wait. Oh, no. The projectile exited this block. Sorry. That was just t-shirt. Okay, so it came to rest. Here we go. Now here's what's interesting. It did not expand even a little bit. After being fired through the t-shirt and into the ballistics clay, or the modeling clay, I should stop calling it ballistics clay, we have zero expansion. None whatsoever. Now this is actually interesting. All right, this is the kind of stuff, this is why I wanted to do this, because this is an interesting result to me. Why didn't this round expand after I fired it through a wadded up t-shirt into a medium where all of my other rounds had expanded reliably. I'm gonna clean up this mess and then I'm going to get back into the studio and we're gonna take a look at this. Okay, I know I said we were gonna go back to the studio and examine those results, but because that 147 didn't expand and I was able to capture it, I've kind of bodged the block back together and I'm gonna shoot it again with the t-shirt over it with the 124 plus P just to see what happens. All right, it looks like I was able to retain that 124 grain plus P nine millimeter round again, all the way through the t-shirt, no issues. And let's see where it came to rest. Ruined, again, the, 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 the damage that we're getting to these blocks, especially with this 124 grain around, is just devastating. Look at this, it just hollowed these out. Again, not a meaningful ballistics test, but kind of interesting. No, oh, here we go. Found it! It expanded! Check this out. So, the 124 grain plus P 
round, after being fired through the same number of t-shirt layers as the 147, looks like this. Interesting. This is actually a interesting little bit of anecdotal information. Now I'm gonna disassemble my mess, clean up my mess, and go upstairs and we're gonna talk some more. Okay, we are off the range now. And again, before we go looking at the results, I wanna stress this is not a meaningful ballistics test. That is not ballistics gel. That's not four layer denim. These are not meaningful tests that are done by in a laboratory by a ballistics professional. I'm just an amateur who's pretty good at shooting. That being said, there is information that we can extract from this test. So the first bit of information is if I handed these two projectiles to you, you would not be able to tell the 124 from the 147. And in fact, I can't. The only reason I know which is which is because I pulled them out of the clay myself. The first bit of information that we get from this is that everything expands under optimal conditions. So being fired into bare clay or bare gel, every bullet is going to expand. Everything works great in bare gel. So if the place that you're getting your ballistics information is only showing you bare gel results, it's meaningless, largely meaningless. Most bullets will work super duper great when they're fired into bare gel. What's far more telling is how a projectile performs when it's fired through a barrier material. Now, all we had today obviously was a t-shirt that was folded over in several layers. I'm not shooting through auto glass. I'm not shooting through wood or anything like that. We're going to do that in future tests because I think it's cool. And that's really the reason we're doing this is because I think it's cool. But the interesting piece of information that we can extrapolate from this is the projectile that was moving at a much higher velocity. This is the 124 grain round. This expanded when it came through the t-shirt into the clay. The projectile moving at a much slower book velocity, the 147 grain round, did not expand. That's all interesting data that we can use to help make informed decisions. Again, we're not talking about a real ballistics test here, but what we are dealing with is information, all right? Does this mean I'm gonna switch out my carry load from 147 to the 124 grain plus P? Not necessarily, although I am going to think about it. What this does do for me is it gives me a starting point. I can now do further tests. I will do further research. Does the 124 plus P perform better when fired through intermediate burials, barriers like wood, auto glass, things like that. Does it perform better in ballistics gel than the 147? Does it perform better in actual documented street uses? The last one, eh, kind of sketchy. There's not a lot of good data that you can gain from that. But what we were able to do here was fire bullets under controlled circumstances into a consistent medium through a consistent barrier material and get a result. 147 grain PDX-1 Defender when fired through a folded up t-shirt into modeling clay did not expand. The 124 grain plus P PDX-1 Defender when fired through a folded up t-shirt into modeling clay did expand. Do with that information what you like. Until next time, I'm Caleb Giddings and remember, run your gun, not your mouth.